All right. Hello, hello, hello. This is the start 
of the stream and the start of Banjo Tooie, which is a game I've played before, but this is my first time playing it on stream, I'm pretty sure. I might have played it a brief moment on stream before. All right, and then let's see. Um, right, that's one that I've already finished quite a while ago. So we're starting a fresh, a fresh one. Uh, Andrew will probably call in at some point coming up, but in the meantime, we can just enjoy this really, really dark intro. And the sound for the Elgato capture went out, so. Wait, wait, maybe not. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I really despise how the Elgato handles sound. Because sometimes it just cuts out without warning or reason, as far as I can tell. But I'm working with what I got. Alright. Yeah, this game is a lot darker, both in literal, like, visuals, but also just, like, themes than the, the original Banjo-Kazooie. The original Banjo-Kazooie, I mean, it had darker moments, but it was not, like, actively kind of scary. The way this one is at least trying to be, and I feel like succeeds in some points. Then again, I did play it as a kid, and as we all know, all of your gaming fears show up when you're a kid. Kazooie's a terrible cheater. That's the best, the best she can do as far as cheating is literally just moving money. The thing that would be the most obvious, rather than, I don't know, anything else. Maybe don't cheat, that'd always be a good option, but, yeah. Can't, can't allow that, can you, Kazooie? This is also a very long opening cutscene. I could skip it, but that's just extra time, baby. I'm gonna keep this stream a little shorter because I uh, have some chores to do after this. It's trash day, so I gotta change the cat's litter boxes and stuff, take the trash out. Gotta exercise. Today is not a rest day. This is, I mean, it's mostly just a change in like lighting, but man, they made this look so much more impressive than the first game was. Like, I'm still, the first game is still looks really good by N64 standards, but like this, this is shockingly like, looks great. And granted, yeah, it is remastered for the Xbox, but that remaster happened like over a decade ago at this point, so it's still, Still looks really good. I mean, as good as anything that was originally modeled for the N64 could. A lot of that stuff is a little dated. A little bit of entertainer's secret throat spray as I entertain. I gotta do some spring cleaning soon. Our house is a bit of a mess because we haven't cleaned anything extensively in a while. Huh. Every, every time. It never saves those settings. 
I'm not sure if I messed with the app I'm running. I could figure out how to do that permanently, but... Oh, sure. I mean, like, the reason I'm able to make things work a little easier is because I have an actual professional audio interface, so it's it's a lot easier to work with. I actually had to, like, switch things around and make it work better uh, for my computer, but it works pretty well now. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, Andrew? I'm good. How are you, Higgins? I'm doing okay. Got, got a lot to do after this, but... Um, I'm gonna keep this stream a little shorter, probably just like a couple hours, but... That's fine, I have to get up early to go, um... Visit my mom tomorrow. Yeah. Vis In visiting. Lexington. Lexington. Impor important visitings. I have a very... are we streaming yet? We are, we're live. Oh, uh, never mind then. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you asked then. I was gonna tell you what, uh, uh, I'll put it this way. I have a cup here, and this ain't water. <laughs> nice. Also, uh, uh, Private Party had that new intro that they yeah, I don't like came it. out today. I didn't like it. You're not fan? I wonder if that's the Hardy Party intro. Mm, good question. I'm sending you what I was gonna say. Alright. Alright. I'm gonna put chat so I can see it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, baby. Nice. We're gonna feel good tonight. This ain't war. <laughs> 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 Alright, so. I just love their delivery of that line, by the way. Like, it's That's really a, good. They get very southern with it. Mm-hmm. Where are they from? I actually... New York. New York, okay. Yeah, they wrestled for House of Glory. Or mm. Hog. Right. Which is a New York, uh, promotion. Okay. Now, since we are still in this intro cutscene and stuff, you told me that you had a story about McDonald's. Yesterday. Oh my god. So what's I your McDonald's story? I had forgotten all this. I knew I had a story to tell. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't remember what the hell it was. So... Let me just complete I, that reminder. There we go. <laughs> I went to McDonald's. It might have been yesterday or the day before. It doesn't matter to me. And I went. Right. That's irrelevant. Right, right. What matters is that when I got there, it was one of those three window setups mm -hmm. where you uh, pull up to the first one to pay, pull mm -hmm. up to the second one and hopefully get your food. But if there's something up, like, oh, you ordered a lot or you ordered something that requires cooking that they ran out of, they have you pull up to that third window. Right. I pull up to that third window and I wait for about how long do you th would you say it takes for one car to go through the line? Uh, 45 seconds to a minute? I mean, if we're so, talking from, like, when you order, I guess, like, two minutes? So, if there was, you know, a line, it would take about how long do you think for 13 cars to go by? At least uh, half an hour. Yeah. Thirteen cars went by, mm. getting their food and going around, and then clearly one was told to pull up to the other window to wait for their food, mm -hmm. but they couldn't, and the people at the windows clearly couldn't understand why the windows weren't moving, you know, why the line wasn't moving at all, despite the fact the person pulled up the half foot. And she looks out and sees, oh, there's a car waiting at the third window. And she comes up to me, and you would think that she's like, we're sorry about your weight, sir, here's your food. Right. No, no. What was your order? What are you waiting on? Ooh, I... Oh, God, I hate that so much. At the Dunkin' Donuts, every time. Because I order mobile, every time I roll up and they try and give me the person behind me's order, and I always have to be like, no, it was the mobile order. And I have to tell them what it was. 
most of the time. It's like, the, yeah. do they not give you a readout or anything? Yeah. Every car passes. Um, and finally they bring me my food. And like, the fact that I have to tell them, and they didn't write anything down. Because they didn't give me a receipt. They didn't, you know, anything. I'm just sitting there waiting for my food. I, I swear to God. Yeah, I, I feel that way at, like, uh, Taco Bell. Sometimes I've rolled up to Taco Bell and waited, like, ten minutes before they even, like, recognized that I was there and said something over the speaker. I've never in my life asked for my money back from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, if a mistake was bad enough, usually they would fix it or whatever. Yeah. I've never been so bad that I'm like, I want my money back. I don't want the food. Fuck it. <laughs> I've never been that bad. But the only reason I still can't say that, or I can still say that is, they left, like, they tossed the food at me and left before I could say anything. Oof. And I was just like, um, no. I, I am sorely tempted to, like, call the district manager or whatever, because, oof. Yeah. I, I was there for a fucking long ass time. Here's a, um, here's a, 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 a status for you. Mm -hmm. Stumbling on your engaged hetero ex on FetLife, finding out they're actually a cut for a homosexual couple, mm. and knowing damn well his fiance is a conservative vanilla straight woman. Oh, the no. tea is hot. Oh god. That's not hot tea, that is peel the skin from your fucking bones tea. Oh man, I don't even I mean honestly just having that having the ability to reveal that if you wanted to feels like too much power. That's why if you're doing something shady, you do not go on fucking uh well, that's something that shocks me, because for a long time the theory was, like, a regular person is generally going to be somewhat polite. I mean, you get some people who don't care and they're just assholes, but generally people are cool. And then, um, as soon as they have any anonymity online, it's way easier to be an asshole because then you don't have to worry about the repercussions. But as we found, like, nowadays way more people are using their real names online, have accounts attached to their real names, and they're just the same massive, fucking horrifying, monstrous people that they would have been, um, anonymously. So really, it's just not having to directly say fucked up shit to someone's actual physical face is all it yeah. takes. Oh yeah, I've had a lot of people pull that shit with me when I was younger. Yeah. Um, I had an ex who was getting attention from guys she did not want. Right. And so she was like, hey, can you um, do me a favor cool. and tell them to back the fuck off? So I did. Uh, by the way, 1 over 2 says, I've been tempted to stay at the window and protest for that. Or, I'd be tempted, and it's because you can get punched over, or you can't get punched over the internet. Yeah. So, she, she had this guy that was giving her, you know, a hard time, and told me, hey, can you talk to him? And so I go to him, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna make up a name, uh, what, you know what made up names from now on are Cindy, for girls, uh, Jane for guys, how's that? Sure. Um, so Cindy asked me to talk to Jake, and says, hey, uh, he's, you know, he's an asshole, like, I'm not gonna go into what he would say to her, right. but it was, like, pretty, like, insensitive stuff, hmm. um, okay. borderline offensive, but, like, more nagging than anything else. Oh, yeah. And, like, just fucking dickhead. So I talked to him, he's like, You wanna fucking fight, bro? You wanna fight? I know where you work, man. I know you're at Walmart all the damn time. I know that's where you work. Come on, man. I'll fuck you up. I'm like, If you know where I work, bro, come on. I don't, they don't pay me enough to give a shit over there. 
Oh, I yeah. am not hiding. I am out in the parking lot all day, every day. Come on. Come I'm out. Know if that motherfucker never showed up at Walmart. Of course not. People talk Jay. a huge fucking game, but as soon as it's like what? actually comes down to things, people are fucking cowards. Yeah, she messaged me <laughs> later. It's like, I don't know what you said to him, but I haven't heard from him in a week. I'm like, I just told him you didn't want to talk to him anymore. She was like, really? I was like, yeah. And she was like, I tried telling him that, and he just did not get the message. I'm like, it's... well, he threatened to come kick my ass, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that same shit of just like, he's basically, I'm sure if he fucking does that to most people, he'd be like, whoa, fucking I don't want anything with it, but because you actually, like, fucking agreed, he's like, it's the fucking episode of The Simpsons, where Homer's challenging everybody to duels, until the, yeah. the one guy's just like, oh, yeah, uh, fine, let's do it. So, yeah. Uh, and that was not an isolated incident. You'd be shocked to find out that none of them ever showed up. Like, I worked, like I said, I was a buggy pusher at Walmart. It was easy to come find me. I was in the parking lot all day, every day, in a bright orange vest. It was not hard to find my ass. And yet none of them ever stepped up. It's weird. In fact, that tells me that either A, they hid from me, when they would go to Walmart, or they just went without shopping, because the only other place you could shop in town was a fucking food lion. Mm. Like, you either went to Walmart for everything you needed, or you went to food lion for groceries, and you drove out of town to the closest other shop. You've been to my hometown, you know I'm not making that up. Yeah. Like, they have an Aldi and that's it. Like, <laughs> so... For someone to talk shit to me at that time and act like he wasn't gonna show up, or act like he was gonna show up and then not. Constant. Constant. And he's like, I'm gonna get all my friends together and we're gonna come whoop your ass. I'm like, you need all your friends to whoop my ass? <laughs> wow. Such a big man. How impressive you are that you need a group to fight one guy. Boom, as you claim. It's just a fat sack of shit. What does that say about you that you can't be a fat sack of shit on your own? And, like, yes, I was stealing Jericho's uh, logic there yeah. of how to shoot a promo. Because you don't, you don't sit there and, like, talk shit about your opponent and make them look like crap. Because, as Chris Jericho points out, if you lose that match... Like, if you go out there and shoot a promo and say, you're an old, out of touch, broken down man who can barely lace up his boots anymore, and then you lose that match, you lost a match to an old, broken down, out of shape man who can't lace his boots anymore. Yeah. If you win that match, you just beat an old, broken down man who can't lace his boots anymore. You got nowhere. Whereas if you say, you're one of the best this industry's ever seen, and it may take every ounce of grit I've got, and a gut full of gravel, but I will do whatever it takes to tear you down. Then when you lose, you lost to one of the greats. That's not all that big a deal. Or if you win, you beat one of the greats. That's fucking huge. And so, the guy sits there and just rips me down. I'm like, so, what you're saying is... You need a group of friends to take out a worthless piece of shit. What does that say about you, my man? Exactly. Although, Jericho doesn't exactly follow that now. Well, so much. He, no, he does. But he's a chicken shit heel. So that's kind yeah. of the point. Like, it's a different kind of heel tactic. Where his actions speak louder than his words. Exactly. So, uh... Here's a fun thing on Twitter, because I'm going to say this. If you're considering supporting uh, J.K. Rowling on the I Stand With J.K.R. tag, just know that in her latest anti-trans post, she praises Magdalene Burns. And then there's a screenshot of a Magdalene Burns tweet. Yeah. That says that George Soros, of course, is the money behind the transgender movement. Well... 
uh, Coco actually found today that uh, J.K. Rowling has been, for two years prior to that, has been doing a daily blog about gender issues and her feelings about them. And holy crap, the fact that people didn't get that she was a turf before when she's been doing that, like, it's some of the biggest turf rhetoric I've oh, ever yeah. heard. She'll sit there and say turfy shit, and then say, Oh, I didn't know that was a... I, you know, that's not my feelings. That's not how... I'm not a trans exclusive. I don't think they're bad people. I just... You know, One of the wild so ones insane. was that um, she One was talking about turf, and she was like, turf, turf excludes trans men. Because they can, because I guess she thinks that you have to be female to be a feminist. Uh huh. I was like, I don't know what the fuck. She's a real disappointment. Gotta say. Imagine, like, like I said earlier, imagine being a billionaire and still being worthless. Yeah. I don't know who this one person is, but they love my tweets. Who's that? Uh, I don't want to say a name out loud in case, yeah, but uh, sure. somebody that follows me on Twitter uh, oh. from Canada. Okay. Which I always, I always find it interesting that people from Canada like me. Um, fucking hell, this drama even has consequences. Oh, all this like bigotry and shit has invaded a Facebook group called Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses. And there's this beautiful picture of a little girl wearing a mask. She's maybe a toddler. Standing next to a horse that is as tall as she is. Mm -hmm. Right? And I gotta be honest, this horse's legs look photoshopped, but I'm not gonna bother with it. Uh, Many horses look like that. No, I mean, like, the way the um, feet look against the cobblestone looks photoshopped. Hmm. It's weird. Uh, I'll send the picture to you. Okay. Come on. Um, but they got commentary on that photo the next day demanding the child take her mask off. Uh, a lot of racist shit because the kid's black. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that does look like that horse isn't actually there. <laughs> weird. But, but you can tell it is in the rest of the photo. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, yeah, it's just a, a weird contrast and like that spot it's just looks there's no more shadow. faded. Well, there's no shadow. Yeah, yeah. But if you look under the girl, there's no shadow there either. It's an overcast day. Mm -hmm. It's a... It just makes it look like that horse is photoshopped in around his front feet. Weird. Uh, one over two, yeah, JK does just keep getting worse and worse. I don't... Pinch of salt with this, uh, but apparently... One person called a tattoo shop to get a cover-up of their uh, tattoo they have. Mm. And they said they were booked through 2021 covering up Harry Potter tattoos. Oof. Now, pinch of salt. But... Oh, wow. By the way, I have a pair of 3M Work Tunes headphones. They were about 50-something dollars. Sure. Um, I need them because a lot of the tools I work with are extremely loud. Right. Um, like I have an air compressor that can blow out your eardrums. I have power tools, etc. So I, Maddie insisted that I get, uh, noise canceling work phones. I was like, well, if I'm going to do that, I want the bells to be headphones so I can listen to stuff. Yeah. So the 3M brand work tools. Oh my god, they're amazing. Hmm. I wore them on the plane to Seattle. I wore them, uh... I'm wearing them now. In fact, I have charged these. I've had them for almost a year now. I've charged, I've charged them three times. Oh, wow. And I use them a lot. Man, I wish my partner had a button that said suck on the back of the <laughs> What? <laughs> what? She just pushed the suck button. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying I just wish my partner had a button that said suck on the back of their head. 
Oh man, that's tempting. No. No, it's not. Not worth it. Oh, so the good news. Hmm. If we were if we got up early enough that we were back in Charlotte by like five o'clock hmm. on next Friday, because we have set aside the truck, the price would have been like a hundred or yeah, like a hundred and twenty something dollars in total. Yeah. But because we won't be back before Friday evening when they oh. close and because they're not open Saturday and Sunday, the price jumps to about what it was gonna be. Okay. But but not as bad. Like it'll still be you know, just under and they gave us like four hundred and thirty three free miles. Oh. And that's a round trip. That's like two Kingsland and back. Yeah. Whereas it would have been that much just to get there. And Maddie is quite happy because that means she doesn't have to drive at all. Um, holy shit. Holy shit. What's up? I'm looking at a 16 year old who got shot with a taser three times in the head, leg, and shoulder. Ooh. He is in danger of losing all of his teeth because of the shot to the head. Oh. A uh, 16-year-old, not involved in any acts of violence. The cop, yep. the cop says, I'm sorry, he's so tall, I thought he was an adult when I took him down. It's not how that works, dude. And I'm looking at the scar across his face. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, guy named Jamel Leach. Mm. Fucking. Uh, those... Noise canceling headphone things you're talking about sound great. They're really good, and they're the cheapest ones I've ever seen. I was gonna say, yeah, usually they're well over a hundred for noise canceling. Is it, is it passive noise canceling or adaptive? I don't know. Okay. Um, but I, because that kind of stuff never really truly matters to me. Fair I just enough. know that it works and that I haven't blown out my eardrums. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely from last year, so I gotta go back at least to 2019. Uh, phone case. Did we get Beetlejuice before or after? Oh man, this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we got the Beetlejuice animated series DVDs, by the way. Oh, nice. How many seasons did that show have? Four. Hmm, oh boy. Uh, yeah, so these are three Amwork tunes. 24 decibel in RR, whatever that means. Um, they can be wireless, or you can plug an auxiliary cord into them. Right. To use them that way. Uh, they take a micro USB charger. Yeah, fairly common. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Boost, uh, noise reduction rate, rating, 24 decibels, noise reduction rating to help protect your hearing. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, easy to use, comfort, the well, battery is amazing, so I'm sharing a link in the chat. Yeah. So that both you and, uh, one over two can see them. Yep. Uh, let's see. Next generation, Bluetooth technology. Yeah, they're Bluetooth, by the way. Uh, air protection, let's use any other Bluetooth wireless technology. Built in comfort. Look at that later. Yeah, like, I've used them for hours before and never had them, like, I've never had them die on me. I usually, they usually get to, like, battery, medium, and I'll plug them in, because... I've only had them get to battery low one time, and so I was like, all right, cool. Uh, somebody said I can usually go about a week and a half on a full charge. Um, wait until I, so I listen about seven hours out of a nine hour day. They do take a while to charge, but you only have to do it like occasionally. Yeah, that's something. That's the main thing holding us back with, like, phones and stuff right now is, like, um, 
the battery technology has really not improved in any significant way in the last, like, couple decades. I will say this. Uh, you don't want to, like, put your phone down and walk off, right? Right. You're not going to keep a strong signal that way. And I can tell you this. The people giving one-star reviews, I don't know what their complaints are, because... The word five is hearing protectors, Bluetooth is junk. If you wear these and keep your phone in your right hand, the Bluetooth receiver's on, your activity is fine. However, putting your phone step five to ten feet away, you, they must have gotten bad Bluetooth chips then, because mine is great. Like, I can put mine in my pocket at work. Um, in worst case scenario, if you're really having that much trouble with it, turn them on, use them with an auxiliary cord. Yeah. Like, and that for me is one of those things where I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, that kind of thing. But if you're the kind of person who's like, no, 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 I paid all this money for a Bluetooth headset and it must be Bluetooth. Despite the fact you paid $50 for noise canceling Bluetooth headphones from a major brand. Like, calm down. Phone As... batteries have basically gotten worse because you can't remove them anymore. I do agree. With That's that. so frustrating because there's no reason for it. Literally, like since the original iPod when they first started doing that, it's like they kn it was so obvious that it was only to make it so that you have to buy more computer laptops too. Yeah. Uh, not being able to remove those batteries is one of my biggest pet peeves. Um. Oh, I need to send you pictures of some new stuff I bought, by the way. Hmm. Uh, it's a product called EL, uh, Wire, or something like that, or... No. Oh, let me Google it. Um, I bought this in the past, and you've seen it before, but I bought some new colors. Okay. Um, an EL Wire. It's not LED. Okay. It's more, it's more like a combination of that and fiber optic, I guess. Right. But it looks like you're holding flexible neon in your hands. Oh wow. You've seen it uh, before. I have a, I had a pair of glasses that had some wrapped around it. Mm -hmm. Um, you've seen me wear those glasses a dozen times. Um, I'll send you a picture. And I will show a link for uh, one over two as well, uh, so that they can see the uh, address. Oh, right, so, those. Yep, yep, yep. I remember yeah, those. That looks like just neon wrapped around Paris uh, glasses, but it's this sort of fiber optic, I think. It's got to be fiber optic, right? Because it's not LED. Right. Uh, electroluminescent wire is a thin copper wire coated in a phosphor that produces light through electroluminescence when an alternating current is applied to it. Hmm. So, that sounds like it is technically flexible neon. Yeah, basically. So, well, neon specifically is like a contained gas, right? Right. Yeah, this says... Uh, copper wire in a, coated in a, a phosphor. So is a phosphor a type of gas? Uh, it can be. I usually see it in um in a powderized form. Phosphorus, synthetic fluorescent or phosphorescent substance, especially any of those used to cook the screens of the cathode ray tubes. So it's a synthetic substance. Okay. Okay, so it's just that with a copper wire inside. But, ooh, here's a Google suggestion question. How do you make phosphor? Okay. Mix two tablespoons of finely, pow or finely powdered charcoal and two of... Um, this sounds like bullshit. Yeah. 
I'm gonna read this out. <laughs> I want you and one of two to weigh in on whether you think this is real. <laughs> Mix two tablespoons of finely powdered charcoal and two tablespoons of powdered cinnamon into urine and stir. Pour the urine, charcoal dust, and cinnamon mixture into a glass with a tube leading into a second beaker filled with plain water. Heat the retort containing the urine mixture using your torch. I, mm, this is from sciencing.com. I feel like... Any any recipe that uses urine, urine is a little too like. There's too many variations of like the the concentration. It gets worse. Oh boy. So I pulled up. I opened the website. How to make phosphorus? Allow urine. It doesn't say how much. Mm. To sit in an open container for seven days. What? Mix two tablespoons of the charcoal and two tablespoons of powdered cinnamon into the urine and stir. Pour the urine into a glass retort with a glass tube leading into a second beaker filled with plain water. Heat the retort. Be sure to wear protective clothing, eye protection, and a breathing mask. Allow the vapors from the urine mixture to bubble through the plain water. A yellow or white waxy substance will collect in the bottom of your water beaker. This is phosphorus. Do not expose it to the air, or it may ignite spontaneously. Uh. After being exposed to light, your phosphorus might or your phosphorus should go very brightly in the dark for several hours. One, if um, it's if it's for the ammonia, I feel like you can just get pure ammonia and make a like a diluted solution. Doing it naturally like that, like there's so many other things in urine that. Who do you think was sitting around storing their piss for seven days? Oh God, you haven't heard about the jar, have you? Oh, the jar. Have you heard about the jar? Are we talking, uh, the Spruce Goose guy? Spr no. So this Are is a thing. Are we talking a different jar? Yes. Is this people we know? It's not people we know. This was a, th a thing, I think it was going around 4chan or something. But it was effectively a guy. It was a guy who kept a little Rainbow Dash My Little Pony figure in a mason jar. It came on it every day for Yeah. And he stored it behind his radiator so all the proteins cooked. So it was slow cooked into a solid mass over time. Confederate statues on Portsmouth's downtown monument were beheaded and pulled down by protesters. Good. Tear down the participation trophies. Do it. Yeah, one knew what the jar was as soon as I started talking about it. I remember there was a guy on TikTok. Chemistry is like magic to me. I believe anything. This town is for the ammonia or whatever, right? That's a thing in your own right. Ugh, not this jar. I never want to hear about the jar. Well, um... Brings a whole new meaning to Jarhead. There was a guy who referenced it on, uh, TikTok, and he, he immediately was like, Oh, you guys think that jar is bad? I remember reading a whole series of blogs from a guy who was distilling his cum into wine! Which is not what you do to make wine, so I don't know what he was expecting. Um... Private window for this. Before I go Googling. I don't want this in my Google search history. The wine? No, 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 just like a different thing. Okay. I apologize, one. I, it, much as it's disgusting, the, the legend of the jar must be spread. I was holding out hope that it wouldn't be the, that, um, that one. Yeah, it's it's pretty uh, infamous in the My Little Pony community. <laughs> because of the high concentration of fructose in human semen hmm. and the fructolytic capacity of the spermatozoa, mm -hmm. it is genuinely assumed that this sugar provides the primary source of energy for ejaculated spermatozoa. However, there are minute and varying amounts of glucose in seminal plasma. Hmm. So theoretically, theoretically, 
if you had a vasectomy, so uh, grain of salt for all this, this is like fifth grade anatomy, I'm trying to remember here. Right. One testicle actually produces the semen, which is uh, the vehicle by which the sperm travel, and yeah. the other produces sperm. Which are the and, actual fertilization cells. Right, and that's why they only snip one ball when you get a vasectomy. Okay. And that's why you're able to still have sex, whereas if you removed both, or disconnected both, you could not. Uh, not, not, uh, you couldn't be a top, at least, with your actual penis and have an orgasm through that method. <laughs> um, so... If one were to do that, and get a vasectomy, then technically, their semen could be used to make an alcoholic beverage. Oh, certainly. I mean, there's Natural Harvest, which is a whole cookbook of things you can do. With semen, yeah. There's, there's several cum cookbooks. Several? Yeah. There, there's, there's more than one. Yeah, the only one I've, I know is Natural Harvest. <clears throat> Man, I can't type tonight. I haven't even had my drink yet. Oof, it's not a good start. Uh, uh, there's Natural Harvest. Mm -hmm. Cooking with semen. <laughs> Which... Um, <laughs> I always Sorry, love that that phrase, that phrase, that phrase, that phrase of cooking with blank. I always love that it's got it can have the double meaning of cooking with them beside you as your partner in cooking, or with that ingredient. Semenology is the art of bartending with man sauce, and there's a cookbook. Don't say man sauce, no. I'm reading the headline as is. I'm just saying um, they should not have said it. <laughs> semenology, the semen bartender's handbook. Hmm. Because naturally, what our cocktails have been missing all along was just a little more smug. It's $15, you won't be shocked to find out. $15? For a semen cocktail cookbook. How many, how many recipes are in there? Uh, it's the ultimate handbook for mixologists, so I don't know why you're bothered to ask how many. It's true, it's um, all of them. Yeah, I mean, it's the ultimate. Uh, semenology pushes the limits of classic bartending. No, yeah. it crosses the limits. It, it exceeds the limits. The limit, it, uh, semen is often freshly available behind most bar counters. It has a personal touch to any cocktail. I will say I'm proud of them so far for not putting the phrase he really puts the cock in cocktail yet. Yeah. The connoisseur will appreciate learning how to mix selected spirits to enhance the delicate flavors of semen. It's not delicate. It's salt. It's, it's salt. It's protein. It's some zinc, too. Oh my god. I should have known that it was uh, glucose because I remember when we were in high school. Oh. This girl in our science class, we're learning about semen. And like that in general. Right. And we're told semen is mostly made of glucose, a simple sugar. And a girl at the back of class shot her hand up and said, That's a simple sugar, why does it taste so salty? Honey. And we all just kind of stared at her until she realized what she had done. She's like, not that I would know. And I'm like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Like, she was asking. <laughs> this book provides useful tips that cover every detail of semenology. Come on. They can't. They could not help themselves with this one. From mixing and presentation to harvesting. <laughs> I mean. We're pretty sure every man could use some tips on semen presentation, but the best part of the book has got to be the drinks' names. Anyone up for an ice cold Galliano cum shot? Or a freshly prepared matcha mojito? 
If we were after us, we'd go with the very classy sounding, slightly saltier caviar. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. The author told SF Weekly in an interview that he doesn't understand the social taboo on consuming semen. Uh, clearly. If you want your partner to swallow, you should be willing to eat your own semen. I mean, it's your semen, and you told them. He also pointed out that people eat lots of weird shit. For example, eggs are technically the menstruation of chickens, and milk is the lactation of cows. Yeah. Which technically is true, but we're still un unconvinced we want any liquid love with our booze. I need to see this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I... I will... I'm gonna look at the reviews. Oh, the, the Kindle price is down to zero dollars. With Kindle Unlimited, three ninety nine otherwise. But paperback is two hundred or not two twenty two dollars and ninety five cents. Well, support indie authors, I guess. Uh, there's also uh, Natural Harvest. Yeah. Cooking right. with semen. Like customers who viewed this item also viewed. Okay. Yeah. Natural Harvest. Cooking with semen. Fifty. Delicious recipes, inappropriate for whatever. Uh, cooking with semen, a uh, hundred delicious recipes. One hundred delicious semen recipes. Just cooking with semen. And a practical guide to racism. Uh, wait. <laughs> and what? Naughty, here's the rest of what's commonly viewed by these customers. Spunk hybrid lube. 50 ways to eat cock, healthy chicken recipes with balls. <laughs> cooking and s cooking with semen. Like a lot of them are just titled cooking with semen. Sure. Uh, a blank recipe journal with a cooking with semen cover. Right. Naughty but nice, lap it all up, semen flavoring pills. Yeah. Uh. Oh, wow. That is a visual, um, a sex toy, we'll just say that. Sure. A welcome mat that says, come inside. <laughs> Cock the way grandma liked it. That 50 pound water and chicken recipes. Come on. Semenoid, 60 cap maximum fertility formula and volumizer. Oh. Humping animals adult coloring book. So it's just animals fucking. Okay. Diseases caused by masturbation. I. Mm. Oh my god. Uh, a Nazi themed sex book called. You know what I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, it's not just... worth it. And it's as dumb a cover as you can imagine. Mm hmm. Um, how to live with a huge penis. Man, I need that one. A 275 gallon cube of sex lube. I mean, there there are professionals out there who this probably looks use like one of those, the volume. You know those storage pods where they drive up like a pod to your house and then uh you fucking load your shit in it and leave. Right. That's what this looks like. Oh, oh wow. It has a cage. It's caged, Iggy. Oh, no. I'm sending you the link. I d yeah, I'm... That's, it's... I'm... On one hand, that sounds like a lot, but on the other hand, it's like, well... Some people probably do, like, have a use you for wanna... that much. You want to look at the pictures. Oh god, that link is large. Hold on. You want to I... Amazon.com. Oh wow. Wow, look that is pictures. that is a structural cage. Look at the pictures. I... <laughs> Why did they throw it off the boat? What are Why these pictures? So for anybody who didn't click it, it's like pictures of the product, and it, yeah, it has a stability cage to make sure it doesn't split. It has a, a buff dude in an apron and no shirt pushing it along. 
It's got two skydivers and it's just tumbling down through the sky. And then it's just submerged next to a fisherman on a boat. Why'd they do that? Um, so... It also, it, I, it has a spigot. I, I got curious and clicked on the, the Nazi book. Oh, no. Because, like... I'm down the rabbit hole. And this point. This author apparently also wrote a book called Razor Wire Pubic Hair. Um. And the. Is this a, a image, book of poetry? Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, image of the naked girl with bandages for a head uh, is wearing a mini skirt out of which appear to be pubic tentacles. Oh yeah, vagina dentata, or vagina tentata, is what that would be. Um. Um. Oh my God! I'm not gonna shoot it. Okay. But like, it's you'll know it if you ever come across it. Okay. Oh my God. People of Walmart adult coloring book. Oh boy. I remember following people of Walmart for a little while. Oh that... god, everybody did. People Ooh. of Walmart was so good. So good. My it's mom... so accurate. Like, to this day, I still see stuff I'm like, man, I could, I could submit them. My Feels mom... a little voyeuristic, is my, my one issue with it. Yeah, my mom got so nervous because of that website that whenever she went to Walmart, she dressed as plainly <laughs> and generically as possible. Yeah. She didn't want to ever be on that website. Like, her worst fear was that she'd wind up on people at Walmart.com. Yeah, I don't blame her. That'd be pretty friggin' mortifying. Exactly. To 
Tony Khan, uh, when, show, when it was announced, like when the lockdowns were originally announced, they, they went and spent the last free time they could in Georgia pre-filming, what was it, like two months of content? Yeah. Whether the content was good or not, that's up for, you know, anyone to decide. I think it was fine. As far as everything that was happening during the major lockdown, like, that was the and, best wrestling content that was being made, or at least being aired. And, and they were smart about it. Mm -hmm. they, they started the thing with fans being replaced by other wrestlers. Exactly, They're, which still works because, I mean, who's going to be more, like, uh, excited to watch wrestling than wrestlers themselves? And... Like, it gives it that, like, backyard wrestling thing of, like, this guy is hanging out in the stands, but he's also going to be in a match in, like, a few minutes. Yeah, and they used that to create matches. And mm -hmm. it, it was more believable there than the way they would do it in arenas full of fans. Where, oh, and just, by the way, this wrestler just happens to be at ringside tonight. Like, that doesn't... That doesn't happen. There's like a trick right. to this, I can't remember how it goes. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, that's how the, that's how up. the whole Pineapple Pete thing came about, because he was yeah. like, just actively there, and he started yeah. a feud with the commentator. Yeah, on, uh, Dynamite, and then on, or at Ringside. Uh, so, they've done that, but they also... When they decided to go back to live tapings instead of pre-recorded, they do two days of COVID testing before each taping. Yeah. And they do two weeks of taping at a time. So they record two shows at once and then, you know, send everybody home for a week so that, you know, everyone's safe, everyone's healthy, and you have to wear these special armbands showing that you're COVID free before you can come in. Mm -hmm. WWE, by contrast, is not testing their talent at all. They give them a look and they say, well, it's, it's not our fault we're not testing. As soon as it's a, a possibility, we'll do that. What they do is they check you for a temperature and then ask you, hey, are you sick? Mm -hmm. And you know, wrestlers, they've never lied to get to get on a show before, so... Uh, what was they, that one... There was that one, like, CM Punk story about how he, um... He shit his pants? Yeah, and he they specifically asked him, like, well, do you have a concussion or not? And he's like, shouldn't you be the one telling me that? And he's like, it's up to you. It should yeah, not be I'm, up to him. Aren't you the doctor? Yeah. Yeah. And so... What they were uh, really asking was, are you willing to give up this match because we will not have your back on that because that's the right. kind of shithead fucking company that WWE is and Tony Khan is absolutely like a better owner and whatnot. Well, oh, yeah he's a better I mean he's a clearly a better person he's got better business sense just overall fan. like he's way smarter at this whole business As, uh, one over two points out even then a lot of people are asymptomatic so exactly yeah. Um, well, that's the thing too. Is like asymptomatic, and it can take up to, it can take two weeks or more before you even show symptoms if you're going yeah. to. Yeah. So for me, it's a case of which company do you want to put your support behind? The one that, in the middle of a pandemic, fired off 30 of its talent, so they can't go and find another job right now and isn't testing their talent, is known for a history of really problematic storylines. Like, their biggest storyline uh, last year was a cut of the storyline. Speaking of, I, I feel like I should address it here. Um, speaking of problematic, Humba Wumba, this character who you use for the transformations in the second game here, rather than Mumbo, uh -huh. is... Uh, I mean, Mumbo already was a little iffy because it was like vaguely, like, just like Orientalism tribal stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, this this yeah. is not cool. Rare. No. This this was a bad move, guys. And you know, the 
this was at a time when a lot of developers didn't know that that stuff was offensive. Well, it's also that Rare is like, they're a British developer, so they're even further removed from uh, the Native American struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, Ross O'Donovan talked about that mm -hmm. uh, and how different things are in Australia. Mm -hmm. And so there's a famous commercial in Australia for oh, KFC, yes. yeah. where a guy, a white guy, sits down in a group of black people at a soccer game, and he's wearing the other team's jersey as well. And he looks around and goes, uh-oh, tough crowd. And then he pulls out a bucket of KFC, and suddenly all the people, you know, love him. And he looks in the camera and goes, too easy. And that's... Uh, that, the thing is, too, because it was an Australian-produced commercial, but it is an American company, it's yeah. really hard to tell where that came from. And people... You can make the argument that it's like, well, they, um... They don't know, I guess. That stereotype, yeah. Yeah, like, they don't know the stereotype, and it was just specifically, like, talking about a specific match between a predominantly... Um, predominantly people of color country and a uh, white country, so yeah, they do. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, so he reached out to his dad and said, "What's the backlash like? You know, there over this commercial?" He's like, "Backlash." He's like, "Yeah, the racist KFC commercial." He's like, "Racist." Like his dad, you know, and all the people that he talked to from home didn't get it. Like why it was racist because they just did not know that uh racist stereotype hello uh i can't read the name from here andrew, andrew looper, looper 333 how many fucking andrews are we gonna get in here yeah now we have three three andrews we got andrew on mic we got uh one over two is an andrew and now we got andrew looper the three three Why? andrews oh, God. what is you ever see something trending and you suddenly get a heart attack? Oh no. Who, what was it this time? I almost said who because that's also what almost always happens. Kit Kat. What did Kit Kat do? Uh, God damn it. I gotta actually pay attention to this. Moon, star, sun, star, star. Taking me back to high school because of all the uh, Andrews or because of... Uh, so many Andrews. <laughs> We're gonna force you to change your name. You're also Andrew. No, not again. Join the cult of Andrews. And then we have two. Join our. Stars. Join us. Yes. Okay. I did. I join did this correct. No. I've already selected a name. Join us, one of us, one of us. <clears throat> How many so, Andrews were at your high school, one? Okay, so Jimmy Johnson is trending. Hmm. Chris Evans is trending. I saw that one How earlier. Why is he trending? Uh, shit, it, it, it was fine, I think. It wasn't like any, it might not have even been anything currently political. I'm curious why a race car driver is trending after, uh... Oh, uh, what was it? NASCAR just announced that they were banning the Confederate flag in all their events from now on. Oh, finally. Well, I mean, a little late, but, you know... They got uh, the memo eventually. Jimmy Johnson is really good. Jimmy Johnson is really good. Jimmy Johnson is So apparently he just did really well in a race. Okay. My my concern was it was gonna be, uh, you know, he was like, oh fuck that, you know, like, uh, apparently he's just doing really well in a race tonight. <laughs> um, that's cool. Sure. Three, three other so, Andrews that one went to high school with. I went to high school with two Andrews as well. Why are there so many Andrews? I went to school with a Drew. First of all, here's a question for all of the Andrews in the chat. Opinions on Andy and Drew. Personally, I fucking hate him. <laughs> fucking hate him. Being nicknamed. I am Andrew. I am not Andy. I'm not Andy. I'm not. No, I'm not Drew. I'm not. I'm not uh, a fucking ten year 
world. And I am not a fucking, I'm not a kid with a Woody doll. And I'm not a fucking uh, middle management guy who wants to seem edgy and cool. Mm. I, I, the name Drew always just like, hey man, I, like, I, I, I can't go for it. It bothers me. Like, it always feels like the guy that, you know, like, hey, I'm cool fellow young kids mm-hmm. it never feels like a, like even the name Drew Brees doesn't sound cool you have to put the Brees on there to make it sound like a good name the only Andrew I know went by Andy but since uh, something he was tails mm-hmm. I fucking hate the nicknames is that it? that's the one okay Bow. No, like, whatever name you want to go by is fine. It just feel doesn't feel right to me. Mm-hmm. I tried going by my middle name for a long time, and that sucked. And that didn't work. I'll never do that again. Yeah. Um, but, like, for me, like, my name is Andrew. That was the name I was given. Yeah. Like, I don't like the alternative name of Andy or Drew. It's just, ugh. Like, and by all means, go with the name that makes you the happiest, what you feel most comfortable and identify with. But Andy and Drew, just, no. Oh no, you've been insulted one. Like, for me, um. Like, I tried to go by my middle name, too. And then, uh, Digimon came out, and I went back to my first name. That was the only other person I had ever seen with that name. So, hell yeah, fuck, or defund Paw Patrol, fuck that dog. Fuck so Paw Patrol. That, Chase wait, is, is a Paw goddamn Patrol? class traitor. Now that Paw Patrol is getting canceled, I can finally post these bad memes. <laughs> it's got the dog from Paw Patrol. Uh, it says all cops are bastard. And all dogs go to heaven except for those class traders and Paw Patrol. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I mean, okay, I'm pretty sure Chase is the only one who's actually a cop, and then the other ones are like garbage men and fire fire people. I will, firefighters, I will give respect to because no matter what, want, you are you are directly just putting your life on the line to save people when you are a firefighter. So that is a respectable profession. I'm gonna question why do you know the names. Clark liked it. Sure, blame the kid. Listen, I also enjoyed it. The, that and uh, Sheriff Callie's Wild West were the two that he watched on loop when he wait, was like, wait, 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 when we first moved here. Reason, the whole reason Paw Patrol is trending is because there's an article decrying Paw Patrol being canceled. Mm. And the entire evidence of Paw Patrol being canceled is one person tweeting. When I say all cops are bastards, that includes Paw Patrol. It absolutely should. I hated, my grandfather, uh, Andrew, called me Andy Rooney. Or Andy Rooney. Oh, I fuck? fucking hated that. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. But I got all this uh. one word, I fucking could not stand it. No, let me go by. No, let me go the by. Only, the only nickname I ever uh, was okay with growing up was the one I had since birth, where my mom was. watching Scrooge one year for Christmas, mm-hmm. and I walked in and I was like, Mommy, what are you watching? And I'm like, but my sister wasn't born yet, my mom was pregnant with her, so I couldn't have been more than three. Mm-hmm. And so I walk in and my mom's like, I'm like, Mommy, what are you watching? She said, Scrooge. And I looked at her, screwed up my little face, and said, Chooch? Yep. And she said, You're a chooch. Like, my mother had no idea. That she called me Chooch for, she's called me Chooch for 33 years, and neither of us ever knew until last year that that's also a phrase for people who don't know anything about cigars. Oh. Like it's kind of like the noob of cigars, or like, look at this fucking idiot over here. It's fucking Chooch. Oh, I don't. Yep. That doesn't feel good in my mouth. I gotta be honest. 
Well, no, like, what do you know about cigars, right? Not much. I know, so, I know you can't get Cuban ones, that's about it. And that you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger why? is a little too into them. Oh yeah, and the uh, one Sigmund Freud quote, I guess. So that's the three things I know about cigars. Freud never said that, by the way. He really didn't? I thought that was at like a... Mm, I guess it is like an anecdote, so... Who can trust it? Uh, where am I going? Prison compound. Oh, my last name is also a lot of fun for people to fucking try and say. Hmm. You know my last name, right? Yeah, Ben. I'm gonna write... No, 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 no. Uh, Let's too late. Let's just write it down first. Fine. And... Coco's not allowed to play. How would y'all pronounce my last name? I mean, it's in my screen name, so... Whatever. Um... My aunt gave my... Gave your what a nickname that... Would up a stir. Wait, that wound up a slur. My aunt oh. gave... My aunt gave my blank a nickname that wound up a slur. No, gave me a nickname. Um, Co uh, Coco, which goes to Coco Bean, which goes to another thing. I don't want. I can't follow the logic of where that goes. Uh, Coco is Mexican, so. Oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's so many ways that one can go too. Like that's the sad thing. Like, that can go, like, I can think of three different slurs that could be right off the top of my head. Because I grew up in the South. Mmm, yep. Uh, Alright, so, uh, one over two. You got one of them wrong. Uh, I'm not, I, I think you might have the first pronunciation correct. But it's, uh, binge. I was born in South Carolina, raised in North Carolina, spent five years in Savannah. Uh, so yeah, I, I've been all over the South. Here's a fun thing. I've told you this story, Iggy, but I haven't shared it on here. Mm. One day in South Carolina, we stopped, I had stopped at a gas station just south of Orangeburg. And I've been all over the South. I've heard accents from those, I know Southern accents. I thought I had heard them all, until I walked into this gas station and heard everyone, including the cashier, talking with the same thick accent. And for a, while, a minute I thought, oh, this maybe I'm near the coast and this is actually Gullah. No, I wasn't nowhere near the coast. It wasn't Gullah. But it was, uh, this... Like, I, I'm going to recreate it for you. This is how everyone in the place was talking. I only understood one word. Okay. Alright. He always go up there, he might keep talking about it, he cuss his house. He was so tired, no, he would. I was like, I understood cousin's house. Um, what was the rest of that? And I thought, you know, it was going to be trouble when I got to the cash register. I thought I was going to have a hard time, like, paying for my drink and whatnot. Right. And so the cashier was like, uh, doing that. Whatever it was like, you want to tell me to tell Daddy? You want to tell me to tell Daddy? Turn me. That'd be seven ninety five. What? And like, I thought it was Gola, but I've heard Gola. That's not Gola. Like, I don't know what that was. What is Gola? Gola is a. You've heard? You remember the show Gola Gola Island? Yeah. Uh, the Gola are a people that inhabited an island. Off the coast of South Carolina. Oh, okay. Um, let me, I'm pulling up the wiki because I do not want to get it wrong. The Gullah are African Americans who live in the Low Country region of the United States of Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina, both the coastal plain and the sea lands. They developed a Creole language, the Gullah language, and a culture rich in African influences that make them distinctive among African Americans. Huh. Historically, the Gullah region extended from the Cape Fear area on North Carolina's coast south to the vicinity of Jacksonville on Florida's coast. Today, the Gullah area is confined to the Georgia and South Carolina low country, so around Charleston to Savannah or so. Um, the Gullah people in their language are also called Geechee, which may be derived from the name of the Ogeechee River near Savannah, Georgia. Gullah is a term that was originally used to designate the Creole dialect of English spoken by Gullah and Ogeechee people. 
Over time, its speakers have used this term to formally refer to their Creole language and distinctive ethnic identity as a people. The Georgian communities are distinguished by identifying as either freshwater Geechee or saltwater Geechee, depending on whether they live on the mainland or the islands. Right. Because of a period of relative isolation from whites while working on large plantations in rural areas, the Africans, drawn from a variety of Central and West, West African ethnic groups, developed a Creole culture that has preserved much of their African linguistic and cultural heritage from various peoples. In addition, they absorbed new influences from the region. The Gullah people speak an English-based Creole language containing many, many African loan words and influenced by African languages and grammar and sentence structure. Sometimes referred to as Sea Island Creole by linguists and scholars, the Gullah language is especially related to and almost identical to Bahamian Creole, or Bahamian, however you want to pronounce Bahamas. Um, there are also ties to Barbadian Creole, Guyanese Creole, Belizean Creole, Jamaican Patois, and Creole language of, or the Creole language of West Africa. Gullah crafts, farming and fishing traditions, folk beliefs, music, rice-based cuisine, and storytelling traditions all exhibit strong influences from Central and West African cultures. I gotta say, um, it's it's a bit of a uh, bit of a different topic, but with the game here, um, this is the thing that I really loved about Banjo Tooie more than anything. Because going through Banjo Kazooie and even Banjo Kazooie Grunty's Revenge, um, everything was really regimented to its own little world that you had to just go into, and it was isolated. But here, we've just jumped to like level five. This is like the fifth world that I'm in now, that I just went to from the first world. And they're just all connected in such small ways that is, it, it, I love it. I love it so much. It's a really, really cool idea that, um, de it definitely did, was detrimental to the actual, ooh, uh, to the actual, like, um, performance of the game on its original hardware, but like. Here's a good video. Uh, I wasn't here to see Jeff, or there to see Jeff Davis fall tonight, but I'm saying goodbye to him in my own special way, and it's just, it's just them setting fire to a confederate flag. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so, last name thing. My last name makes a great pickup line. <laughs> Have you heard it, Amy? I believe you've told me, but let the, let, let them know. Alright, I want you to look in the camera as I deliver the line so that people can see just how impactful and effective it is, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna use it directly on you. Unfiltered, full power, you ready? Okay. Are you looking in the camera? I believe, yes. Okay. Hey, name's Benj. Let me be your addiction tonight. <sighs> So good. So, so good. I was with my dad picking up a car one time, and <laughs> so I just replied with an emoji I can't tell the face of. <laughs> uh, like my, I'm at my desktop today, so my computer screen, I can just kind of see all the text. So, um. We're, we're picking up the car one time, mm. and a woman, like, we get the most awful pronunciations of our last names possible. Yeah. Uh, Bengi, Bengay, Bing. I got Bing one time. Uh, Benji. Mm. It's just Benji. It's just Benji. Like, yeah. So, uh, the woman. It's like Benji, 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 and I'm like, it's Benj, like the addiction, leads to a great pickup line, and this is where my dad stopped dead in his tracks, and the woman, like, sees the look in his face, and he's like, oh, and what's the pickup line, so I delivered the line, right. and my, my dad laughed so damn hard. He was in his 50s. He's like, I have never, ever heard that one. I never thought of that one. He called his brothers 
like, Steve, you gotta hear this. And he delivered the line, and I could hear my uncle cackling over the other end of the phone. <laughs> so, like, that's so good, I never thought of that one. And I'm like, it's the most obvious one. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and I have friends who are like, I wish I could do that with my name. And I had a friend whose name was Blue. I'm like, of course you can do that with your name. And she's like, how? I'm like, name's Blue. Get with me tonight, your balls won't be. Like, or your, your name is even simple enough to do it. Like, hey, I put the D in Iggy D Kid. Like, it's so easy. I can do that one too, but like, it's so easy. Oh yeah, I will say real quick. Uh, Dinon earlier said one of the more notable last names I've heard was Kentiriatis, which I mainly just read so that anybody who reads that knows how that's pronounced. I believe that I believe that's Greek. I thought that from where I'm sitting, it looks like counter virus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more it's right. more like Contour Iotis, but it's Kentiriatis. Here's a good tweet. Racists who love the Confederacy. The Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone is an act of treason against the United States. Uh huh. Says the guy wearing the flag of the failures of the biggest treason against the United States ever. Yeah, they're real proud about being losers. They always are, like the Nazis. Lost. The Confederacy. Lost. Fucking always losers. And they gotta have their participation trophies. Oh, uh, because they're f- special literal snowflakes. Like, they are literally the whitest snowflakes possible. Like, they are so awful. They're the worst. They're- you know, it's always shocking to me because, like, they so often make it seem like um, the the left side Democrats are just so emotional driven. But, like, if you actually look at the, like the values... I drink beer! I want to drink beer! Fucking... Yeah, if you look at the actual values, it's like... So much of the reasoning behind the the Republican values is based on their the, the the emotional stake in it, and that's not always technically invalid, but yeah, it's just like I don't know. Fucking Ben Shapiro is like the fucking epitome of that, where he 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 he's the fucking. Oh, facts don't care about your feelings, but it's like, if you look at anything he says, like, his emotions are a massive part of his reasoning in most of the shit he talks about. Do you know who, um, his cousin is? Oh, uh, oh, you told me, um, hold on, hold on. Matilda, Mara Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. I can't help thinking that's why he's the way he is, because how could a girl, you know, be more popular than his own cousin. Oh, I bet everything he does is to try and one-up Mara. Oh, most because certainly. she's beloved. Doesn't have to work to be famous. Like, she's still beloved today. Got to hang out with Danny DeVito, and who does he get? Alex Jones, the right-wing Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> that's, ac- that's, that's accurate. You know what I hate about the reviews on books by black authors? They are filled with people saying, I'm not racist, but this book hates white people. So I hate this book even though I haven't read it. So yeah, right now you can have just release the positive reviews on books you've read. Uh, yeah. Anyway, joke's on them. Every time I read a review like that, I'm 5,000% more likely to buy that book. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Like, oh, it hates white people. Oh, white people who've made themselves so very lovable. Yeah, like... I'm trying not to call out my own tweets here, because I'm trying not to take my own horn, but like, cop, you know, out here beating people, killing people, and then turning around wondering why they're not more beloved. Holy shit, did you see that Patrick Cloud thing on Instagram, where it was like the NYC police chief? ranting about how, oh, you're not respecting us. You act like there's a, that, like, our, our reputation's spoiled, but there's still a shine on it. It's like, okay, prove it. And he directly was like, he's, this is that fucking guy from the bagel shop again. The one who was like, oh, you fucking women always saying, uh, fi- uh, you're five foot, why don't you go kill yourself? It's like, this is not, nobody said that here. Yeah, but people, the women in general are saying that. It's like, mm, yeah, that's what it is. 
I saw a picture today of a grown ass girl hugging her dad. So, and the caption with it was, We are trying to explain to our daughter why so many people hate her father and his co workers, all cops who are out here serving with honor and dignity, unlike the handful of bad apples. And they're like, She's a grown ass bitch. Try talking to a four year old about why her daddy ain't coming home anymore. Oh my god. Describe your act like if if those cops want to actually like educate their kids, they should describe a single day of work. And, you know, the likelihood is not a single one of those days goes by where they don't have to beat the shit out of somebody for really no legitimate reason other than to protect the capital of the rich people who fucking fund them. Um, here's the headline for us all. I'm going to uh dig a little deeper, but the headline Tucker Carlson is leaving the Daily Caller. Oh my god. He's fucking always jumping ship on shit. Like, he's the most fucking wishy-washy right-wing yes, fucker he, on the planet. He started the Daily Caller. Oh, did, did he? Did this turn into a Doom mod? What the fuck, <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah, this this game, there is first-person stuff, but it's actually the GoldenEye engine. Oh, god. Anyway. Is it? Because it's uh, fucking Rareware. They, they made GoldenEye. Tucker is selling his stake in the Daily Color, so he's not just stepping away, he's selling off. As he focuses more on his primetime show. I'm just too absorbed in what I'm doing. I wasn't helping in any way because I've got an hour to do every night on Fox. Yeah, you know, it's really hard to fill an hour of time when all you're doing is being racist. Like, yeah. it's so hard. Here, I'll do it. Oh, I'm being racist. Oh, wait, we do three hours a night. Fuck yep. off. And we do it. Fuck, people on radio shows do four hours on average. And they can, they can handle it, even if they're talking about just fucking pop music. Uh, Neil Patel, the publisher who founded the site, oh, told the journal he bought Carlson's one third of the company. Said the growing venture is now the largest minority owned and run digital media company in America. That's depressing. That's pretty sad. That's yeah. real sad. Like, if the Daily Caller is the largest minority owned media company in America. Mm. Wait. Who? Mm, I'm calling uh, nonsense on that. Uh -huh. I think that might be incorrect. Okay. I'm willing to bet that a few uh, recording labels. Uh, oh yeah, fair uh, point. Fucking uh, title, I guess. Yeah. Title, yeah. Uh, oh shit! What was that? Oh uh, goddamn it! They're clipping through. Bones. I'm trying to think of things that like. Uh, I, let me Google something. Mm-hmm. I always hated these sections as a kid because uh, I was never really big on first-person stuff, especially navigating first-person maps, but, like, okay. I enjoy it a lot more now. But yeah, like, I'm willing to bet a couple of, like, just fucking record companies are probably... Oh, certainly. Like, like uh, FUBU, uh, fucking, like... And I'm just going with, like, the first things to pop in my southern racist raised brain that are probably bigger than the fucking Daily Caller. So I almost call it the Daily Stormer, which is, uh, different, but, mm. uh, it's the same contest, just a different website. Yeah. And it's specifically not CEO-oriented versus pretends not to be. Yeah. One over two says I can't play FPSs because I can't aim. Yeah, me. That's a big reason of why I didn't like them for a long time. They're, it's really difficult for me to aim in most of them, and as soon as I go slightly askew, um, I kind of just lose whatever uh, axes I was on. But with this one, I, I could handle like original Doom because it would always have you on just the the 2D axis, basically. But with this, it basically keeps you here, and you can just kind of flick it up and down, and it automatically recenters, and that makes it a lot, lot more manageable. So Trump is going to hold his first rally since the pandemic. Uh, not a good time. Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Mm, 
course. Next Friday. The only place that will have him still. I'm shocked. He's such a germaphobe. I'm shocked that he's trying to downplay this so hard. Oh, he, I bet you he either shakes all the hands or none of the hands. Yeah. Oh. It's gonna be one or the other. Uh, and he'll make some other excuse for it. Whichever oh, direction it is. By the way, I wouldn't uh, go to fucking Jacksonville and Tempsey. They're oh, was not planning to. to. But I'm saying they're likely to be the host of the RNC convention this year. Ah, oh, gross. Yeah, because their governor licks boots so thoroughly that he knows each fiber of the fucking shoelace. Of course. Hold on, there's gotta be a way to get this this guy. Over here. Um. They've done a great job with COVID, as you know, the state of Oklahoma, Trump said during a White House event. Oh no, they've done the worst. Have they done anything? No, they were like the first to reopen without like any reasoning for it. They were just like, no, we just want to open back up. Getting tired of this shit, and it's like, good. I mean, enjoy fucking killing off a 3% of your fucking population, dude. It also comes amid sweeping protests against racism. Uh, it also raised eyebrows for its date, a day known as Juneteenth, which commemorates the end of slavery, as well as its location in Tulsa, a city with a troubling history of racial violence. Oh no. So they're picking uh, I just, a semi-racist day to begin with, Yeah, and they're I, picking a city with racist history. I, I just... God, oh, the, the, sh the shit he is going to say. I, I honestly would not be shocked if he, like, accidentally lets slip a slur, and then everybody's gonna be like, No, he didn't actually say that! You Look at the video! He wasn't accidentally. making fun of a, of a disabled person, he's just a nervous guy! Did you ever hear that reasoning? People, like, saying, like, oh, he's actually really nervous and shy, so, like, when he was... When he did the thing that was clearly making fun of a disabled person, that was, you know, that was him being d d being nervous. No. And he no. had no idea the guy was disabled. He'd never seen him before. And uh -huh. yet he perfectly mocked the guy's physical disability. Yeah. Like, point perfect. By the way, I'm about to uh, drink my uh, shot in here. Oh boy. Good, so, good timing. Um, We're about 20 minutes out from the, the end of the stream. So if you guys hear me again, you know why? I got a chaser, so it should be too Where good. was, where was the way into that whoop, chamber? Oh fuck my nuts! That bad? <laughs> it's so hot. It's so hot. Oh god, it's so secret ingredient. -y. <laughs> mm. oh, oh that's fuck. right it's got uh, everclear so that's what was it you said that's that's hot at like room temperature yeah Oof. like it burns your mouth like, i keep it in the freezer right and it's still Ooh. warm in the mouth <laughs> see this is what's really gonna make me drag i have no fucking clue where the fucking door that just opened is and i'm back at the beginning of the Ooh, that was a this, is, this is gonna get worse with the other two uh, first person bits where you actually have to do them within a certain time frame. Oh. I wonder how many subs play this game and are like, man, I wish I could be consuming right about now. <laughs> oh my god. Hello? 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 Where are, where, who is there? It is I. Dio. One squeaky cheese. Is that it? Is that Did it? I tell you that story? No oh, way. <laughs> I got, uh, um, inebriated the other night. Mm -hmm. And was making myself a cheese sandwich. And sure. all I could do was, like, make up characters as I did it. So I was just, like, you know, high out of my mind. Right. Yeah, I'm like, and oh, my name is Juan Squeaky Cheese. And I'm like looking at the bread like, 
ciabatta? No. Sourdough? No. I need a bread with character. With? Hello? Is you, are you still there? I think Andrew might have dropped. Alright, well, we'll continue to play. This is uh, one of the first boss fights of the game, and it is real tricky after this first bit. Um, at least I remember it being. Yeah, these guys pop up. And they are annoying. Especially because the way they show you is they break the 180, uh, the line of action, as they call it, in cinematography. So you, um, can't actually see where they're going. Like, they, it tells you to look the other direction effectively. There's Andrew again. Hello. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, I'm still streaming, so. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know if I'm like your stream froze. I don't know, it's the Maybe your connection dropped. Perhaps. Um. But, yeah, I just did this whole, like, bit for 10 minutes talking about I need sexy bread. I need weights. And, like, my girlfriend hears all this upstairs as I'm constructing a sexy sandwich. And she's like, babe, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, what's wrong? She's like, you just sound a little... You know, Freaking me out. Mom. I'm like, I'm fine. It's like, what, you do not like mom squeaky cheese? No, it's Javier squeaky cheese. Javier squeaky cheese. Oh, this squeaky cheese fortune. The squeaky cheese family. Icky the fool. Truly. Alright, I believe that is the last... Uh, I might have 100 percent this area. Let me see what my totals are at. That'd be a perfect spot to finish up the stream, but I might go a little bit further to get at least the two hours. Let's see. No, I still have two more that I need. One of those. I'm missing. Uh, oh wait, I know what the other two are. I have to um, I have to get another ability from another uh part of the game to do that. So I'll go do that. I feel bad for anybody with the last name of the governor of Oklahoma. Because it? No matter what it is or what your first name is. It will always make you sound stupid. Because it's the perfect last name. Stit. So no matter what your name is, you are now Kevin Stit. Amanda Stit. But oh wait, are, the fool uh, right, Iggy is the dog in uh in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, right? Yeah, one one was making a reference, apparently. Uh, the only I used to watch Goku, and that's about it. Yeah, that one's all right. I feel like the original Dragon Ball was way better than Z could ever be. It's so weird to see the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Like if you go back and rewatch the original, it's a completely different style show. Yeah. It's like yeah, a it's like a fun adventure story, and the the other one is just full on just fighting. Sci-fi. Fi, yeah, well, fighting sci-fi yeah. shonen. Yeah, it's very weird. Hmm. Wait, the dog has a stand? <sighs> State health officials say 47 new COVID cases were reported in. Tulsa County on Tuesday, with the overall death toll in Tulsa at 900. 
1.73. Wow, that's like... That's like a 1% of the country. Yeah. Yikes. A little around that. He would first hold a rally there before moving on to Florida, Arizona, North Carolina, where the RNC was originally supposed to be held. Now he is pissed that the governor of this state, a Democrat, wouldn't let them hold a rally here. Mm. I just... This is not a political issue. People are getting yeah, hurt. Yeah, got done dirty. Yeah. Uh, one over two says Yamcha got done dirty, and yeah, that's why Iggy is on the team, because he has a stand. A stand? Okay, so JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is basically another fighting show similar to um, Dragon Ball Z. Okay. But the thing is, everybody has, like, a ghost spirit thing called a stand that has, like, a superpower that they're able to use. So by having a stand, that means that... Yeah, he's he's able to be a fighter along with the rest of them despite being a very small dog. <laughs> Cody Johnson has tweeted, uh, finally saw NASCAR's statement about Confederate flags and will be flushing my car down the toilet. <laughs> Protesters in Richmond have pulled down a statue of Jefferson Davis. Okay. Good. Good. About time. People can read about these assholes in books where history is preserved. We don't need monuments. Somebody said that that statue of the slave trader in England that got pulled down and thrown in the river. Mm -hmm. People learned more about it in that week than they did in 125 years of that statue standing there. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, is the statue standing there doesn't teach shit. And generally, the, the plaque that it has with it would be a lie. So... Yeah, like, what is it teaching you? Uh... This guy were clearly glorifying salt people for a living. Yeah, this we're commem it's a commemoration. If you have a statue. Really yeah. You don't put up the statues of people you hate. Nope. Yeah, you know, we don't have the statue of slavery up. Well, I mean we do, but it's called Stone Mountain, Georgia. They tore we down have... the Nazis everything as soon as they were defeated, you know. It's not like they kept it up there to to legitimize their legacy. So, I will say this. Uh, going to AEW, you know, we're happy con or content to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of FTR? Oh, they were real good. What did you think of Jericho's commentary during the FTR match? Because <laughs> it... that was... He's really good on commentary. He was not good here tonight. No, he was real stumbling. I think it, part of it is because when he was on commentary before, it was just him and Tony, but now it's like he has to go up with like Excalibur and JR, all four. Uh, mm, he's just out of his league. What irritated me was how he kept like going to just a catchphrase over and over that I think he was hoping to get over, mm -hmm. but he wasn't. When he kept saying, meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, he just can't, like, go into that meat and potatoes line and, like, you can hear, you can almost hear JR and Tony and this color going, yeah. He potatoes. was just, he was just, like, shrieking the whole time, basically. Like, they would cut over, they cut over to him at one point, uh, in the best friends versus inner circle match and like his fa he's just, his face is just totally screwed up just screaming at the top of his lungs about whatever it's like okay I almost wonder, that, that's I almost wonder if he didn't do it on purpose huh? because so many people were saying man you're you would be great on commentary i hope like that when your in-ring career is over you you move over to commentary you're great oh and, like, they kept doing that. So I wonder if it's a case of he did that so they would shut the fuck up and yeah. leave them the fuck alone. Also, I know how to make one of the most explosive mixtures on the planet, and I, you can buy the ingredients at Dollar Tree. Hmm. Like, you can buy the ingredients. You don't even have, like... Here's the thing. You actually have the ingredient. You only have to buy one thing to have all the ingredients for one of the most explosive 
fixtures on the planet. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to say it on the stream because sure. I'm sure yeah. I'm gonna get fucking. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, if anybody with... Yeah, if anybody with the, the power and to do something about it has been listening to any of these streams, I feel like that, that goose is already cooked. Well, maybe yours. They don't know where I am. Listen... All they have is your ISP. And they have your full name. Nobody ever says my real name. Uh, all right. They don't know what. To, and by the way, there are a lot of Andrew benches in this country. Really? Yeah. There's a famous one in Ireland. Hmm. Not that one. Yeah, that's the top of the morning to you. I'm the famous media mogul Andrew Bench. Can't you tell I'm on the internet? I, oh, that's the story I need to tell. I have a high school substitute teacher who has never heard my real voice. Oh yeah, you told me about this. I so for those of you who don't know, I have a substitute teacher named Miss Miller. And I don't know what possessed me, but I just looked over at a friend of mine in Corey's one day. I was like, watch this. And when it, she called me, I was like, tell me the mind in Miss Miller. And for. Uh, 15 years now, that woman has never heard my real voice. She saw me at Walmart, stuck up behind me, and I turned around just in time to see her. I was like, Miss Miller, how are you? <laughs> I have done that fucking accent for 15 years. Oh, it's so good to see you. How are your kids? You know, like, are you still teaching? And she has never once heard my real voice. <laughs> And my mom thinks that is the cruelest joke I've ever played on anybody. <laughs> but my mom loves a good prank in general. Oh yeah. So, oh, you know, you should well, you should tell everybody mom, what what your uh, your mom's gifts have been. Oh, I'll tell them that, that after this story. But yeah. I told my mom about that when uh, she gets a call. From Miss Miller. And, like, she saw that it was a school number and she answered the phone and, like, Hi, Miss Binge, we have a, a teacher here, Miss Miller, who'd like to speak with you about your son's behavior in class. She's like, Oh, okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I've got time. And I could hear Miss Binge, this is Miss Miller. How are you doing, Miss Miller? <laughs> <In my mom. laughs> and she goes, Oh my god. <laughs> like, I've never heard defeat through a phone so clearly in my life. Um, so my mom loves puzzles. Mm -hmm. Jigsaw puzzles. You know, the, the cheap dollar ones you can get at Dollar Tree. Ravensburger is a brand she likes, but they're expensive. Yeah. Um, you'd be shocked how expensive the puzzles are. Like, they're super expensive. Like, they can be ridiculously expensive. So, I bought my mom, but I like to get her a thousand piece puzzles that are very difficult because I'm an asshole. And I'll get her things that are like candy, like ball, bubble gum balls, and just a big close up shot of balls of bubble gum. Mm. So, it's just that, or like Coca Cola advertising in a collage style. Uh, I get her, like, whatever the most fucked up puzzle I can find, I get her. And so, I had to escalate. Like, I had, get, I had gotten her, like, an M.C. Escher puzzle, which she still contends is the worst puzzle she ever did. It was the most infuriating puzzle. But I had to uh, step that one up, right? I had to do better than an M.C. Escher drawing. Oh, yeah, and one moment here. Uh, one over two, check it out. So, you remember Honeybee from the last game in GBA? Here she is in all her po polygonal glory. Uh, so, when I, I was like, the only thing I could possibly do is a fucking blank puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so I googled and found a Ravensburger brand white puzzle that starts in the center as a spiral 
going outward, and then becomes a square at the corners. So cruel. And she hated that one. And then, uh... Yeah, it does kind of look like the beef from Honey Cheerios, but the girl version. Uh, yeah. so I, I got her that one. She hated it. She hated it. She got to the end of it, had one piece left, and it was the wrong piece for the spot. No. She looks like she had this piece that didn't fit the spot at all. It was completely incorrectly shaped. So she loses her mind, and she checks everywhere and finds the correct piece on the floor, but they had given her an extra piece. Ah. Uh. And that's what happened with the MC Asher one as well. And so, um, my current puzzle that I got her is a holographic color changing puzzle. Depending on, like, each piece shifts colors depending on how you rotate it in your hand. And that's it, there's no picture, it's just that. This one was a hundred dollars for that puzzle. And I gave that to my mom, and she is... She has to wait till my niece is a little older to start working on it. Because my niece has a weird habit of walking up to my mom's puzzle table and shifting all the pieces around, and when my mom's like, No, no, don't do that. Oh, no. My niece will get angry and just push the table and shake it all up angrily and then storm off. And she's like three. Well, okay, I guess, but... You've seen the video of my niece, right? Talking to me? Oh, yeah, yeah. What, uh, Iggy, so that people know I'm not lying, what did I teach my niece my name was? Uh, for your niece, you are Uncle Dammit. <laughs> it is the funniest thing to see this sweet little girl going, Hi, Uncle Dammit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that started from, right? It all started because of the Game Grumps doing a crossover episode with somebody, and they were playing a Spider-Man game, right. and they called him uh, Spider-Man. Right. And Dan was like, like Saul Spider-Man, like, oh, what with the webbing and the sticky, and the, oh, damn it. And it went from there to me just, like, fucking losing it laughing. And I, I did that for, like, a whole car ride. And my mom was, you know, fucking losing it laughing. And at the time, I didn't know any better. I really didn't. I, I genuinely just thought they were making fun of New Yorkers. Did not know any better. Mm. I know better now. But, uh, my mom will text me D-E-H-M-I-T whenever she gets annoyed at something now. God damn it. And it's become, like, an in-joke for us. Yeah, I looked at my niece from the day she was wearing my, uh, pointing my chest, like, damn it? Say, damn it? Damn it. And I thought it would have been hilarious if that was her first fucking word. Mm -hmm. Right? Imagine, she's like, damn it. Dad. And they're like, oh, she's trying to say dad, dad. Dad. Damn it. Like, that would have been the, like, are you kidding me? Mm. I want that text message from my sister saying, you fucking asshole. And she's pissed. She's pissed that, because my son calls her Lee. Right. Because he couldn't say her full name of Holly. So she just became Lily. Lily. And he still calls her Lily. Aunt Lily. Um. Sure. So, to, like, her daughter, however, Uncle Dammit, <laughs> she is little, like, your son gave me a cute name, I got a cute name, you got my name, and I was like, every time she sees a picture of you now, <laughs> what makes me so upset is I wasn't even there for it, like, I was at home and I just get a voicemail from my mom saying she said it. I was like, what? And she sends a video, and apparently they had been looking through, like, baby photos of, you know, my sister, me, and my son. And she sees a picture of me holding my son as a baby. He goes, baby damn it. <laughs> and, uh, like, 
Kelly, she recognized me as Uncle Dammit, and so to this day, I am Uncle Dammit, and I, I hope she grows up like her mom, very conservative and straight-laced and all that, and forgets that she called me Uncle Dammit for all those years, and so I have the video to, like, show up at her wedding, like, some of you may not know, but... <laughs> <laughs> I used to be Uncle Dan, and everybody just, <gasps> and I play the video, and they're just like, oh my god, could she not say Andrew? No, I just taught her my name was Uncle Dan, and <laughs> she I went with you. it. <sighs> my son, when he was about her age, was a huge fan of Toy Story, and right. uh, he wanted, uh, I think I told this story on this stream. Don't recall. About Walmart? And him crying in the middle of Walmart over Toy Story toys? Mm, I don't remember. Okay, so... He wanted this large, uh, Buzz Lightyear figure. Right. Uh, that was made with plastic, I guess. And there were, like, plushes, there were plastic toys, there were, you know, different things that never existed in any of the, like, stuff, the content, right? Right. So, there's, like, a space Woody where he's wearing, like, an astronaut suit and whatnot. Hmm. Um, and my son wants this, like, $50 Buzz Lightyear doll. And I'm like, son, we can't afford that. We can get this Woody doll. And he, he, you know, we try to get him to get a small plush Buzz because he didn't want Woody. And so he, he just was inconsolable, wouldn't accept anything but the 50 something dollar Buzz Lightyear doll. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this is going to be one of those moments where he has to cry himself out because we can't get it. I don't have that kind of money. And so we're walking back to the front and he's crying his eyes out. And there's nothing, I can't punish him, I can't whip him for wanting something. Yeah. yeah, I can't, like, and, like, I'm not a whipping parent in the first place, so that's, you know, but I, it's not like I can say, hey, no, no, don't cry, you know, he's fucking three, yeah. he doesn't understand poverty, right? And so, uh, he, he gets to, like, the kitchen where, halfway through the story, he's like, and he doesn't use the phrases flush or plastic or anything. Mm-hmm. He's got slightly different phrases for everything. And so he's like, I don't want the soft woody. I want the big hard buzz. <laughs> and then we're like, we can't do that. Aiden, we, we can get you this one or this one. This is all we can do. And, you know, we're fun. we finally give up and start heading back to the um, front register. And he screams in the middle of the store. Okay, okay. I'll take the big hard Woody! Mm. And I told him that story. He is about to be 13. Oof. And I told him that story the other day. And the look of shock and fear in his face. I Like, he's a pale kid to begin with. He turned, like, ghost white. He said, let me scream. I want a big hard Woody in the middle of Walmart. And you did nothing about it. I was like, well, you got the big hard Woody. What was there to do? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, what am I supposed to explain to you the phrase plush and plastic at three? He was like, please never tell anyone the story. I'm like, are you fucking kidding? As soon as you have a friend, I'm telling him. Mm -hmm. He's like, <laughs> he's like, as soon as I have a friend. I was like, yeah. It's like, damn, Dad. Burn me, why don't you? Roasting him is one of my favorite things in the world to do. Yeah. Because he makes it so easy. Republicans are calling for military occupation, and Pelosi's like, we need to work together. Wait. Uh, There's not a compromise here, bud. Downtown Charlotte, mm -hmm. where, where I am not, <clears throat> protesters put out a Black Lives Matter 
thing that covered like a section of the road. Sure. The city of Charlotte uh, Twitter account tweeted done hashtag Black Lives Matter. Hmm. Then while they were doing that, literally while this was being painted, Charlotte City Council passed a budget giving 40% of the city's general fund to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. <sighs> defund, like, I'm one of those extremists that's like, you know, fire they do defund the police. I am absolutely an abolitionist. Um, yeah, abolish them. They are actively just a private military to support, to protect the capital of the rich. I have said for years, they are a gang with badges. They're just a state-funded gang. And they only uh, protect the rich. Like, that's that's all it's there for. That's why they're so angry, that's why they're getting so violent, because these riots, no people are getting hurt. The police are armored, they're fine. The things that are getting hurt are buildings, they're businesses, these businesses that should be insured anyways. So all they're doing, all of this violent crap they're doing, is to protect businesses and buildings, not human beings. Because they have, they have no... Um, they have no liability in whether or not you are protected or not. Yeah, and as somebody pointed out, police are showing up to private or peaceful protests ready for war. Yeah. Um, because that's, I mean, that's the mindset they put them in. Yeah. Um, uh, and as somebody who's had a cop pull a gun on him, fuck the cops. I've. I've discussed my history with the police several times, and I know for a fact the only reason I survived all of it is because I'm white. Yeah. I would be dead if I were a person of color. And I, I'll tell the story. Fuck it. Yeah, go when for it. When I was in my twenties, I was actually when I was twenty, because my son was not born yet, his mother was at home, pregnant with him when this happened. I worked at a window factory. And I would drive from my co-worker's home every night after work, and he would cover gas, you know? Sure. Um, apparently other people charged him a lot more than that, and I was like, I know how much we make, I'm not doing that. You yeah, cover gas, and I'll yeah, we're good. Yeah, what more do you really need? Come on. Well, people were, like, charging him for the service, and he was shocked that all I wanted was gas money. Um, all right. I mean, yeah. So, we're on the way home. We worked second shift, which meant we were getting off around midnight most days. We're tired, right? Like, we, oh, yeah. want, we want no trouble at this point. Uh, he was an older white guy. I'm white. Now, I should point out, because it's relevant to the story, that I drove a 91 Buick Century at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, this would have been in uh, 90, or 2007. Not a new car. Yeah. The motor in the automatic windows had died when it was down, so the window would not roll up. My grandfather and I pulled the door open, got to the window and raised it up as high as we could, held it up there with some 2 by 4s but it still left a 2-inch gap across the top. Well, uh, you know, weather existing and bugs existing and animals existing, I had to cover that hole, so I used packaging tape on the inside and outside to cover right. it up. Um, so, they, you know, had it like that for a year and a half, no problems. So, I'm in the car, and a cop pulls us over, and I look over at my friend who I will call Jimothan. Sure. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, there was no one else on the road, so it wasn't like we had cut somebody off. Uh, we weren't speeding. I looked at him and I'm like, are we speeding? I was, I was maybe going three over. And he was like, no, you weren't speeding. I was just about to tell you to hurry the hell up. <laughs> so, <laughs> we couldn't figure out why he had pulled us over. So, we handed my registration out of the glove box, and I got my wallet out, get my license, had them ready in my hand. Right. Uh, cop comes up to the car, it's like, license and registration. I open the door to give it to him because I can't roll down the fucking window. He pulled a gun on me and pointed it directly in my face at point blank range. I am 
you know, there's a door between us. I can't do anything. And he screams at me to shut the fucking door. So I shut the door. And then he says, I need your license and registration, please. And I say, I can't. You told me to shut the fucking door. Another reason I'm still alive because I'm white. Because he would have just shot me. He would have shot at both of those points. Like, he wouldn't have told me to shut the door. He would have just fired. Yeah. And he, he wouldn't have put up with that lit. So I would have been dead twice over if I were a person of color. Um, and he says, why can't you? I was like, because the window's broken. And I'm clearly, like, getting pissed with him. And he walks up to the window, taps the tape with his gun, says, open the door slowly. Keeps the gun pointed in my face. Like, I can see the fucking rifling in the fucking gun. I hand out my paperwork. He looks it over, looks at the car. He says, your vehicle matches the, the description of a stolen vehicle earlier tonight. Hmm. I, I thought maybe you had stolen this one. I thought this was crushed glass and tough. And I looked at him and said, you're full of shit. No one steals a fucking 91 Buick Century. No. And, period. And he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And he, he laughed as he walked back to his car. Like, that's the thing I remember. As he put the gun away, saying, I thought this was crushed glass at the top of the window here, and then you had stolen this car. He laughed and went back to his car. That's I never got a up. name. I never got a name. I never got a badge number. Nothing. He just walked off and drove away. Laughing. Um, Ridiculous. Yeah. I got pulled over in Virginia for going eight miles over the speed limit. Oh yeah. This this really take, pissed me off too. Had to take an eight hour driving course because of that. Um one hour for each mile over. Yeah. And when I got to the driving course, it was run by a cop. And he said, uh, how fast were you going? I said, eight over. He said, 80 over? I said, no, 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 eight over. And he was more incredulous that it was, that I got pulled for eight over than eighty. Mm -hmm. And he said, when did you get pulled over? I said, uh, day before Thanksgiving. He's like, oh, you were a quota. And then he looked at the room and said, quotas aren't a thing. And then he just kind of nodded, like, yes, they are. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just, there's so many fucking instances with the cops, um, that they've never helped. They're, they're not there to help. They're there to hurt. Yeah. They, that's uh, it. That's Chief Wiggum said. Chief Wiggum put it succinctly. We're powerless to help you, not to punish you. Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, the th God, there's a video by Thought Slime, which is just called All Cops Are Bad because that's the, the more algorithm-friendly version of ACAB, but uh, it, it details not only why fundamentally the police are not meant to help you, but also it details the history of the police. The police have not been an institution for, a, like, a very long time. They've been around for a little over a hundred years. And their roots are in uh, slavery. Yeah. So, yeah. The first, the first official one was created in, in Great Britain, and then it was taken over here to, uh, yeah, help with the slave trade. And what they would do is they would find escaped slaves and return them to their owners. Yeah. Again, protecting capital, pr helping the rich. That's and all they're there for. Racist. Like, just racist. Like, they protect, they protect property, and that is it. And so, uh... Well, not, not really, because that's one of my other inc incidents with the cops. Uh, a few years later, I had a new car that my dad... I'm not going to go into the stories with my dad. I don't like my dad. No. We'll leave it there. Enough said. So, he had his license suspended. Uh, and he stole my car. I called the police and said, there's a man in a stolen vehicle with a suspended license, drinking while driving, probably, you know, stole the alcohol because he doesn't have money. I don't know where he can get money for alcohol. Uh, anything he's using or anything that's in that car is stolen. Like, 100% of the 
this point. And they said, uh, and who is this person? How did you get the keys to your vehicle? I said, it was my dad. And does he live with you? I was like, yeah. And they're like, well, we can't do anything about it unless we catch him driving drunk. Mm. Why? Because he had access to the keys. Nonsense. That's the thing, too. Um, they'll they'll no, talk shit about I, that. 99% of the time, they're making shit up. Because the vast majority of cops don't know shit about the law. And, like, I asked them, so, a stolen vehicle, you know he has no license. Now, I'm getting angrier and angrier on the phone with him. They're like, because he had access to the keys, it's not Grand Theft Auto, and we can't do anything about it unless we catch him driving drunk. And I'm like, fuck you. I straight up said, fuck you. And the yeah. cop was like, would you like to come down to the station, sir? I'm like, what, are you going to arrest me for saying fuck you, but not a guy for fucking stealing a car and driving drunk with a suspended license? So you're going to punish a guy for criticizing you, but you're not going to do your fucking fuck you job? Yeah. And the cop was like, sir, I can't help it. That, uh, there's nothing I can do. I was like, no, there's nothing you... Like, I, I fucking lit into him. Like, the fact I didn't... The fact I have no criminal record that I am aware of is impressive. Yeah. Because I talk a lot of shit when people piss me off. I really do. I will talk shit. And nobody's been dumb enough to either throw a punch or arrest me yet. Um. Straight up, like, I, I've been incredibly lucky no one has been stupid in front of me that badly. Yeah. Alex kid becomes an adult and is just Alex man. Mm, yeah. So wait, would female Tanuki have huge vaginas? Or just like massive labia? Because hmm. if the guys have massive balls, they're half unless they reproduce asexually. I mean, they're mushrooms. They're not balls. What? You never see female tanuki, therefore they must somehow reproduce asexually. Therefore those aren't mushrooms, or balls, they're mushrooms. I, I was talking shit about wrestling the other day. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm talking about the uh, tanuki from mythology specifically. Yeah. With the look. Um, so, oh, going back to wrestling. Yeah. Somebody asked, I was criticizing WWE. And somebody asked me, well, what would it take for them? What would they have to do to bring you back? I'm like, I don't think they could do anything to bring me back. You could promise me Sting versus Undertaker. I wouldn't come back. Yeah. And I, I want to modify that statement now. As long as the guy in charge is still there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing, is like, it's not about something they could do to bring you back. It's like, what they did that will make you never want to go back. Yeah. And I don't blame you. It's uh, it's insanity. It's so irresponsible, and they already were such a gross business in the way that they handled their talent, and really mishandled their talent in a way that was just incredibly dangerous for them, and showed that they had zero respect for the people working for them. Um, you saw the article I sent you the other day about Triple H, though, right? Uh, oh yeah, where he actually stood up and like let the talent know that yeah. it was an open conversation. Uh, Shawn Michaels mm -hmm. apparently got into an argument with a producer backstage over Black Lives Matter uh, really? Sunday night. And when you hear that story, you're like, oh no, right? Yeah, that makes me pretty nervous. 50-year-old Texan, or 50-something-year-old Texan, uh, it's a touchy subject to begin with, but, um, so I read the article, and apparently one of the WWE producers backstage didn't think Black Lives Matter was that big a thing, like, like, was all that important. Really? Yeah. Did they not and, read the news? Uh, apparently. So, um... Uh, Shawn 
while Mike was apparently uh, living to the guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, let me, let me pull up that particular article. Uh, Fightful Select is reporting that Shawn Michaels got into a heated debate with another producer before uh, their show Sunday night. The other reporter, or the producer, reportedly claimed that everybody already gets treated the same in America. Mm. This angered Michaels, who attempted to explain his systemic prejudice and inequality to the producer. Word of the argument did not reach most of the wrestlers until the next day. It was said that Michaels was professional and continued to work alongside the person for the rest of the show after the argument took place. It is incredible that there is still need for debate on this topic. I, Michaels, yeah, Jesus. So, knowing that Sean Michaels stepped up and was like... Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the most heartening thing to me is, like, the most progressive, like, one of the most progressive... And biggest wrestlers is uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's incredibly progressive. Oh yeah, he's yeah. surprising. Like you get worried with like Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. Dustin's shocked the shit out of me because I've seen him post. Uh, he's done like ride-alongs with police, and I think he's been like deputized. Oh. Maybe. So you're just like, oh god, Dustin Rhodes had commentary on the trans uh, experience. I can only imagine this will be great. And it was great. He was like, this transphobia shit needs to stop. You know, my son is trans. You know, I was like, huh? Good for Dustin. Dustin said trans rights. Hell you yeah. Know? And Mark Quinn up there with the BLM armband was a. Oh, that made me so happy. Mark Quinn, I think Isaiah Cassidy also had one, but he just wasn't, like, competing today. to see more people wearing it but they've all been public about their support and then brandy because it's pride month she had the the denim jacket with the big rainbow on it i am so tempted to buy that cody shirt oh god i need to get some more some more like aw merch because honestly the one i'm wearing right now kylie ray is still the only aw shirt i have just haven't have, taken the time i have moxley Nice. I have AEW is for everyone. I think that's it. Uh, you know who I actually, uh, if you count everything that you can buy from a wrestler, mm -hmm. uh, who do you think I have the most merch from? Hmm. Ooh, that's a good question. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Marty Skrull. Okay. I have a uh, Marty Skrull shirt. Hmm. Um, it's Mick Foley. Oh, because obviously. I Fuck. Four, <laughs> yeah. I have all four of his autobiographies yep. and two autographed posters. And the autobiographies are also autographed. Um, so... Second place, if you don't count the posters, because... Yeah, they weren't wrestling specific. They were just, uh, you know, thing he did at his comedy show. Uh, I'm counting it just so I have an excuse to buy more of the second place person. Mm -hmm. Danhausen. Yup, I need to get I some Danhausen merch. I have a Danhausen sticker. I have a Danhausen keychain. I have a Danhausen shirt. All three match. Real quick, this is a big Dan pet peeve of mine in this game. Right, okay. This moment right here. Wait, maybe it's not. No, it's not this moment. There's another moment where the beam hits a door and it opens out towards where the beam hit it. And that's such a big pet peeve of mine because it's like, what? Why did you guys animate it that way? Okay. Um. But yeah, I've got three things with the same Dan Housen design, and then I got his Ring of Housen shirt. So that he'd get hired at Ring of Honor. And if you don't know who Danhausen is, 
You should absolutely look it up. Oh, absolutely. Because I remember... I, so, I first discovered Dan Housen through Nyla Rose, actually. Uh, the spicy water video. Did I show you that one? Oh, yeah. That was the first Dan Housen video I ever saw. Nice. Uh, he's offered a white claw. And he takes a drink and spits it out. He goes, ah, you spicy water. <laughs> I fucking Wait. lost it. And he's made that into merch. Um, of course. Of course. Oh, wow. So here's, uh, scary side effects of the coronavirus. And it starts in countdown form. So 12, COVID toe. Pink eye. Mm. Uh, a new term, happy hypoxia. When your blood oxygen is dangerously low, but you look and feel totally fine. Oh yeah, I heard about that one. Early on in the illness, low oxygen is usually only or the only respiratory problem, so you're feeling a okay. Uh, um, Hamburg ICU unit found that COVID threw testosterone levels out of whack. 68% of male patients had low testosterone, while 60% of female patients had elevated testosterone. Huh. Uh, in some people, COVID causes rashes. Mm. There's no specific pattern, they just show up sometimes when there's a viral infection. For some reason, though, it's more common in COVID than other viral infections. Yeah. It can mess up your kidneys. Yeah. Uh, 30% of those in New York and China had kidney injuries. Some of them had to go on dialysis. Uh, they might last for months long after you recover the symptoms. Uh, almost one fifth of Wuhan's COVID patients had heart trouble. Mm -hmm. It messes up your brain, causing seizures, memory problems, loss of ability to speak, and other neurological issues. Oof. It's not clear whether this is the virus or low blood oxygen. Right. The first COVID symptom might be diarrhea. Oh, uh, that's terrifying because I have had, what, TMI? I've had really bad diarrhea the past week. Oh no. Some of the patients who got diarrhea first never developed any respiratory symptoms. So. Mm. Okay, that's wonderful. Seriously ill COVID patients get blood clots, which is life threatening. Yeah. Nick Cordero lost it. lost at least one of his legs. I didn't hear any updates after that, but yeah. like. So yeah. you're lucky if that's all you lost. Mm -hmm. Because if a blood clot can break loose in your veins and make its way to your heart, it's lethal. Yeah. Uh, patients are reporting fizzing, tingling, and bubbling sensations all over the body and also just inside the rib cage. Mm. But it, they can't pinpoint the exact cause, but it might be due to the flood of chemicals released by the body's massive immune response. And here's the thing I've thought recently. Isn't it pure luck that, like, our organs don't itch? Yeah. I guess, like in, I mean, they can't get dry, which is one of the main reasons you might itch. And if they don't come in contact with too many irritants, so... Yeah, that would be awful. I just, I, I, I've, I've been saying since like the beginning of this pandemic, I feel the reason people aren't taking it serious is because it's not as visceral as something like Ebola or whatever. It's not, you don't see pictures of people with like sores or growths, but like it's, it's still really horrible and people are really not taking it seriously. It really is. Stay home if you can. Wear a mask. Um, only go out for essentials like weed or couches. Um, make your make your sure you're wearing your mask correctly. Don't have yes. it under your nose because then you're just spraying you're just spraying anything in your system directly onto it through your freaking snot. And don't tuck it under your like. Don't pull it all the way down under your chin so that you can talk to somebody. No. In fact, try not to touch 
the mask part and only the straps. The straps and the little the little bridge pinch on top yeah, if it's the one. if it's the fabric type. Yeah, and make sure it fits your nose comfortably, but firmly. Mm -hmm. uh, a tip if you wear glasses like I do. Make sure that there's enough room for the, the bridge of your glasses on the bridge of your nose, so when you fit it, put it a little, a tiny bit lower, because otherwise it'll just be slip sliding with your glasses the whole time you're wearing it. Um, here's a mask I wear because you can actually change out the filters in them. And they don't go around the ears, they connect in the back of your head with Velcro. Mm. And they're made of neoprene. Which I love. I love it, love it, love it, love it. What love is it. neoprene exactly? Because I know I know that it's what they make mouse pads out of, basically. It's the sort of plasticky foam. But what what how what how do they achieve that? Is it like a, a strung out process the way they might do for like steel wool or something? was the first of the first synthetic rubber created dating back to 1930. Natural rubber was in such high demand in the 20s and prices kept rising. Neoprene is a type of polymer. Uh, da -da -da. Also called polychloroprene or chloroprene rubber, synthetic rubber produced by the polymerization of chloroprene. Hmm. Um, Neoprene foam, yeah. so it's basically a foam rubber. Right. Yeah. And there's usually like a weird, yeah. um, smooth fabric that they put on it that I don't like. But yeah. It, it's okay for the mask because yeah. it doesn't touch your face. Um, they're great. It's a great set of masks. Um, I wish they had some filters in stock right now, but people have been buying them the fuck up. Yeah. So I have been... I know, so what I had to do was get rid of the filters I have, wear the mask as usual, and just wash it every week after I go to the grocery store. Right. Uh, but I've had this mask for over a year now. It's wonderful. It is... Great. Um, I recommend it to anybody who, yeah, you know, well, we all need masks right now, but I recommend it to everybody, um, because it's just like, um, they're, you know, they're affordable, they're reusable, the valves are very easy to breathe. It's better than nothing. Yeah. That's really the thing. It's like even the T-shirt mask that you make is better than not having anything. That's what I actually use as a filter right now. Is uh, I some, because the way the mask works is there's these large holes in the neoprene to allow air through to hit the filter. You don't breathe through what look like big valves on the front. You exhale through those. I mean, what we're using right now are basically just dust masks. They are the ear loop style mask, but um, they do specifically state that they're not for medical use. But that's the, the best that we can get in stock right now. And here's the thing, you don't need medical use right now right. if you're just going out of the store. If you're hoarding N95 masks, please consider not doing that and sending them to a hospital if they can accept them. Oh, um, yeah. And if you're that British lady, go 
choke on a mask and die. Fuck you, lady. Did you see that? The British lady who's yeah. like hoarding medical supplies for her art. And she's yep. like, the interview starts off with her going, I'm an artist. Like, oh, and like, you see her. Your art does not supersede its safety. And her art. It, that's I'm being charitable. Keeping your my calling it art. It's awful. She's the like the like performance artist, right? I hope it's performance art. So if she thinks that what she's putting on that poster board is art, then I, and I'm not one of those who like. You have to be like a Renaissance master for me to consider you art. I I fucking drew a shitty comic for a year and a half. I know crap art when I see it, and I'm okay with crap art. This is there's no what she is making has no fucking merit whatsoever. Mm. Art that is my definition of what counts as art is if there's some form of merit to it. If it yeah, you know, and what she's doing has no merit. It's not art. It's not. Um, she's not saying anything. She's not producing anything of beauty. She's not. You know, like, no. You know, no. No. If you're my age and you can draw a stick figure, but you know, it means something to you. That's wonderful. That's art. That's yeah. fine. What she's doing is performative. I'm trying to get a rise out of people. Yeah. It's not art. And I don't encourage anybody to look it up because it's just not worth your fucking sanity. Nah. Just trust when we say she's a shit. Yeah. And we're going to end it with that because I got to go do some stuff. And we actually went quite a bit further longer than I uh, necessarily planned to, but I don't exactly have a specific time frame. So, with that, thank you to everyone who's watching now, who was watching earlier, who watches in the future on the archive channel, which is down below on the browser version. Although they changed things up a bit, I think it should still be there, but um, yeah, you can figure out how to navigate the new Twitch that they just up updated. Uh, I also have my personal channel down there. I have my schedule for what I'm going to do in the future, so check that. Follow me on Twitter if you want to see the tweets when I'm about to go live. I will tweet that out every time. And if you haven't, please follow me on here. I'm trying to get to the uh, 50 followers I need to be considered for affiliate status. So I would appreciate it. Following is free. So just click the uh, the heart somewhere up there. So yes. Before, before we go, can I um, suggest a name for our fans? Sure. I think we all know it's going to come from the greatest song ever. Okay. You know the greatest song ever. Mm. It's objectively the greatest song title ever. Mm. Can we call our fans to come, Junkies? Mm. Oh, fine. Yeah, maybe, probably. <laughs> fine. How about the wonderful... Uh, let we'll, we'll shop that around a bit. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got to go. I got stuff I got to do. Goodbye. Good night. Good thank you me. for thank you for tuning in. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. It's, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Oh!